The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. This is Ken Curra, market development agronomist with Pride Seeds. We're in a field near Staffa, Ontario, a field belonging to Mark Brock. Uh, this is a Pride 300 bushel initiative farm here. We have uh, uh, Pride Smart Stocks Hybrid 2900 heat unit A6535G8 planted in this farm. As you can see behind me, just a fantastic looking stand, 20 inch rows. Uh, it's due for its last shot of weed control. Clean up a little bit of volunteer wheat that you see in the distance and a few broad leaves that are, uh, that are trying to poke through uh, down here in the, in the lower, what's soon to be lower canopy. This field's about a week away from canopying in. Um, just a great looking crop in narrow rows. This was planted April the 19th uh, in ideal warm conditions. This is a Huron clay loam soil. It's really nice lush soil. Uh, fairly high in organic matter. We're going to talk a little bit in a minute about what that organic matter content really means in terms of early planting management. Again, April 19th, this was planted early. It was planted two inches deep. Uh, soil temperatures were great at the time and then stayed warm for about a week. We ran into that cool weekend in, in late April. However, this corn was germinated and well on its way to, uh, to escape any millipede feeding. And that's what I want to talk about here as we crouch down to some some residue in this field. In my hand, I've got uh, basically a clump of uh, looks to be radish residue and, and wheat residue from last year's crop. Mark used a uh, cover crop, a tillage radish following the wheat. It was planted last August and in the spring basically uh, didn't require a burn down. Uh, it died off fairly well and, and basically cultivated it off twice, once early and once prior to planting to to work a nice seed bed with some moisture and plant it into it and it worked perfect. So but what I have here is a, is a clump of residue and uh, you know within that residue if you pick these clumps up off the ground you'll find millipedes in there right now with the cooler weather. There, uh, There's one right there. They're feeding on that decaying wheat straw and radish residue. Of course, there's no chemical control for millipedes, so seed treatments and the like that uh, that we use to control other uh, seedling pests, uh, such as seed corn maggot, wireworm, etc. When we use poncho uh, or even in in furrow and in, uh, insecticides such as force, don't work on millipedes. So they are a bit of an issue for early planting. Here's a decaying chunk of tillage radish here, and it was actually when I picked it up was just loaded with millipedes. Um, so yeah, they're they're just sensing that decaying residue. If I pry it open, just, this is uh, this is wild stuff right here. You can just see piles of them in there. Turn that around for you. There is all life stages of millipedes in there, and there has to be about ten or twelve of them packed in that in that piece of decaying radish. So the question really becomes, you know, we've heard a lot in the last in the last year about the frontiers in corn yield. And what are the next frontiers? How do we get to that next echelon? You know, really 200, 250, and approaching this magical, mythical 300 bushel barrier. And we've talked a lot about soil tilth. And this producer is doing a lot for soil tilth. He's practicing rotation, and he's using tillage radish as a means of mechanical tillage in his field. It's creating a lot of residue, and yet every high yield presentation you've ever heard talks about early planting. You need to plant early to get really top yields. How do we manage this? Well, I mentioned earlier in the video, you know, if we're going to have lots of millipedes with early planting, typically April planting, we have to deal with some cooler temps between planting and germination and emergence. This year we were fortunate. We didn't have to deal with that. The temperatures stayed warm basically from Mark's planting date of April 19th right through to the 26th or 27th of, uh, of April. We had that cool weekend. The corn had a chance to germinate and was on its way corn planted during that cool weekend was a different story and with the soil temperatures cooling off the furrow became an ideal temperature for these millipedes to settle in and feed on a decaying seed uh, which essentially is a, is a primary food source for them and they go right to it and not uncommon to see a pile of millipedes like that go after a, a seed. So really important early planting uh, take advantage of your soil tilth, the ground's ready to grow, ready to go and ready to grow. 
died off early and uh, we're going to plant early but look at that 48 72 and even uh, seven day forecast to uh, to see what our soil temperatures are going to do and if it's going to cool off get get close to frost at night for a couple of nights in a row you might be best just to sit tight in a condition like this and let this field sit until we get a good five or seven day warm stretch in the forecast and then go ahead and plant it and that'll create your best opportunity to get full emergence in the field, get your full stand. This one here is 42,000, and it's pretty much right full. So everything worked out right here, and I'm really, really optimistic about this field. And, and uh, once we get the post-emerge chemical on to clean it up, uh, we'll have headline fungicide applied at tassel, and uh, really optimistic about how this is going to yield come October.